This is the video introduction for the Curriculum Alignment Project. This project is a fun project that will have you applying the skills you learned in this week's presentation on content-based learning. The purpose of the Curriculum Alignment Project is to gain experience in using literature to meet curriculum goals. This project will also help you gain practice in finding resources to match the content-based curriculum that you'll be working with in a classroom. And last, you will learn to use the integrative literature model in planning content lessons. And this means you'll learn how to teach math, social studies, science, writing, health, and other um, subject areas using a literature-based approach. There are five procedures to this project. The first procedure will be to choose a theme to use in your classroom. You may choose a theme that you're using along with your book list project, but also you may want to pick a theme that you know would interest the age of learners that you're interested in teaching, or also you might look back into the Pennsylvania SAS website and see what kind of content areas would be important to create a theme for that age of learner. You may even use the um, thematic area that you brainstormed at the beginning of this week's lesson when you did the warm-up using the PASAS website. Your second procedure is to choose one literacy skill to teach during the theme in each of the following areas. You will teach one comprehension skill. You will teach one phonics or phonemic awareness skill. You will teach one vocabulary skill. If you are in the upper elementary grades, you may also substitute fluency or writing for phonics or phonemic awareness. So those of you that want to teach above second or third grade, you won't need to come up with phonics or phonemic awareness because they're past that in their curriculum. You can substitute fluency or writing. After you've chosen those three skills, remember one for comprehension, one for phonics or phonemic awareness, one for vocabulary, you move on to our content areas. And within our content areas, you're going to t pick two content areas to teach from. So you can pick math, writing, social studies, science, or health. And you're picking two out of that group. And for each content area, you're going to choose one skill to teach. So let's pretend you picked math and social studies. You would teach one math skill in your thematic lesson, and you would teach one social studies skill in your thematic lesson. Let's say you picked writing and science you would teach one writing skill and one science skill aligned with your theme. For help within the content areas, please visit the PASAS website and this will show you what is grade appropriate. Step number four is choosing five pieces of literature and this is going to be your text set. This is going to be the text that is both nonfiction and fiction that go along with your theme. We did this um, often when we um, do our literature, weekly literature sharing. We think about all the different things that we can do around one piece of literature. Your job would now be to pick several pieces of literature, and by several I mean five. Just to reiterate, one piece must be nonfiction. And then your fifth step is to take your information. You're taking your five pieces of literature, you're taking your three literacy skills and your two t content area skills and you're putting it together on a graphic organizer and I do think a web works great but whatever kind of graphic organizer you can map out this um, this unit within your map you must include the name of your theme the literature skills they're covering and your content area skills and an activity for each one now, let me show you what this looks like as a completed project. This is basically what your completed project will look like. It may look slightly different, um, but I have at the top my literacy skills. So I have a comprehension skill, I have a phonics skill, and I have a vocabulary skill. For each of those I have an activity, and for each of those I have a book for my text set, all going around my theme of zoo. At the bottom of my organizer, I've chosen actually three content areas. You only need to choose two, but I wanted to show you how it looked like um, to find different activities in different areas. So I chose 
science and math and writing and I have a science objective, a math objective, and a writing objective and I have a science activity and a math activity and a writing activity and I have literature that's different for each one within my text set for my theme of zoo. So you can see that this is not a lesson plan it's not detailed it's basically finding five books to match the theme of your choice taking each of those books and giving it an activity in the comprehension area, in the phonics or phonemic awareness area, in the vocabulary area, and then on the flip side, using two more of your books for one of the content areas. So I, my example had science, math, and writing. You can also pick social studies, you can pick health, whatever would best fit your theme. My objectives are taken directly from are Pennsylvania state standards or trickle-down effect from there. They're very simple objectives. And my activities are not given in detail. You can see for comprehension, they're drawing a, a story of their personal connection. That's all it says. For phonics, they're doing a game called rhyming jumps. And from this activity, we're going to get words from the story and they're going to jump when they hear a rhyme and then we're going to make our own class book called Zoo Rhymes. Um, and that's going to be to extend the pairs. For vocabulary, we're doing an exclusion brainstorm. So I'm not giving you a lot of details, and that's okay. The project uh, purpose is to figure out how to pick a theme, how to find literature to match your theme, both fiction and nonfiction, and then how to extend and use that literature for the purposes of teaching all your reading skills and your writing skills and then the skills for the content areas that you're you're working with. It's basically what we do at our weekly literature sharing but we're starting with the theme instead of starting with a book. Okay, So it's kind of the reverse order. I'm going to show you how this project will be graded. This is the rubric for the curriculum alignment project. The total project is worth 100 points you must tell me in your project the age of learner you planned your theme for and the title of your theme. You can see those are at top, at the top. Now for those of you who are online, just put that information with your reflection page because it does require a reflection. So you'll drop box me the age of learner, the theme, and your reflection, and then you'll drop box me the graphic organizer, and then I'll have your rubric for you online. So you can see there's a couple categories you're scored on. First of all, I'm looking at literacy. Do you have all three areas of literacy represented on, on your web? So comprehension, phonics, or phonemic awareness, and vocabulary. You get five points just for having that topic there. The activity that you choose, is it developmentally appropriate? For each of those categories, it's worth five points. And is the skill that you chose to, to write your objective age appropriate. So I'm looking at, did you find this from the Pennsylvania State Standards or from a similar curriculum that would be a skill that a, let's say you're working with eight-year-olds, is it a skill eight-year-olds would need to learn? Or if you're working with four-year-olds, is it a skill four-year-old would need to learn? Each of those things are worth five points and you'll get five points for each of the areas. So five points for comprehension, five points for phonics, five points for vocabulary. Then moving on to our content areas, the fact that you have two content areas represented on your organizer is worth another two sets of five points. The activity is developmentally appropriate that you chose, and then that the skill is age appropriate, and those will be graded the same. Then we look at the literature selection. So some things you need for your literature selection. You need to have the title of the book, you need to have the author of the book, and you need to include both fiction and nonfiction on your organizer. Okay, and that you can see that is in the example that I give to you. Um, also for five points is the fact that you've organized everything on some sort of graphic organizer. I want you to use a graphic organizer because when you plan a theme, it's really nice to see it visually all at once. Instead of leafing through several different papers of activities and lesson plans, it's really great to get a, a snapshot of it all at once to see if it's going to work and be cohesive. The last part is going to be your reflection, and your reflection will be, again, Dropbox separate from the organizer unless you attach the two together, but you're answering these questions. What did I learn? Why is it important? What difficulties or successes did I have? And what would you do differently the next time you plan a theme? 
All of this is very simple. Give me, you know, some good answers to these questions, and I can see from that what you've learned. And this project should be a lot of fun, and it should be easy if you've been following along every week on our weekly literature sharing and with the new knowledge that we've covered the last two weeks. This should be fairly easy. One last reminder. We have a class, uh, your book list project is going to be due uh, the week after this is due. If you want to put them together, if you have previewed the book list project, you will see that you have to pick one theme on your book list and have five books on that book list under your theme. If you want to piggyback these and pick the same theme and the same books, that's great. You can do that and you're killing two birds with one stone. So good luck. Have fun, and let me know if you have any questions.